Our next guest is a man known for many roles in the film, entertainment and business sectors. With a career spanning over 21 years, he continues to wow his audiences on and off the screens. Fatal Seduction, which premiered on Netflix last month, showcased his diverse roles or his ability to embody these roles amongst many other things. The man, of course, is Tapelo Mugwena, as you can see on your screen. And he joins us now to shoot the breeze, so to speak, on a Friday morning with us here in the studio. Yeah, Hello, yeah. sir. Thanks for popping by. Yeah, thank you for having me, champ. You know, before we went to the break, I described you as a Renaissance man and could see you it made you feel some tough away, as they say in the streets. Yeah. <laughs> Is that something you struggle with? I mean, when people kind of place you in a category of individuals, you know, yeah. because of just how much you've been able to do. Yeah, man, like, um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm careful to, to always find balance, you know. It's, it's, it's appreciated that people can view you like that, but it's a lot of pressure. Mm. And I, I try not to wear the pressure. My, my whole thing is let the work speak. And, I, and, you know, and, and it's appreciated, you know. I'm just, a, I'm just a worker who's passionate in what he does when he does what he does. Hmm. But I, I appreciate it. If the work is speaking, it's on a loudspeaker. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody can hear That's it. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> um, you've also recently been on Men's Health on the cover there, and you've described yes, it sir. as an important period of your life. I'm trying to find the exact word. Yeah, you said it's validating. Yeah. for you to be there. Tell us a bit more about that. Yeah, you know, because um, growing up, to be honest with you, um, growing up with brothers, growing up in a sports family, just being active was always a thing. And I, I, I remember so vividly growing up and seeing these covers, watching, being inspired by them, yeah. just dreaming, not knowing that, you know, maybe it's manifestation, but not knowing that the proximity would get, you know, tighter and tighter and closer. So... It was really just um, um, uh, an ode to my childhood self, to be quite honest. I remember so well, you know, wanting to collect these magazines of these guys that look like superheroes because they inspired me. So to have an active lifestyle and to finally grace my own cover was such a beautiful moment. And for my sons, who are nine and five, to see it, and they're very sporty, and they're so aware of six-packs, this, that, just being fit and being a superhero, I felt like it was a moment for them. Um, more for them than me. And right. of course, um, it, I think it should ultimately be an inspiration to anybody. You know, your body is your vessel. Your, your tool is, it's, it's this, you know. And if you take care of it, it might contribute to your wellness in 10 to 20 years from now. So I'm all about wellness, vitality. I live that life. Yeah. So I think the extension is maybe a cover, but it's my life. Sure. Yeah. With the benefit of hindsight, now that you're here and this is no longer this elusive idea of being on the front cover of such magazines, Correct. Yeah. what do you reckon it took? You know, how do you reckon, now that you're able to trace your own journey, you got there? Yeah. It's seasons of sacrifice. Mm. You know, you could be doing so many things, but you choose to go hit the gym or you choose to go cycling or you choose to go, you know, run. You could be doing so many things, but you choose to stay at home and build something from scratch, build a business. You could be, you know, it's time, you know, it's how you apply your time. The, the older I've gotten, 40 years old now, I've really become extremely aware of my 24 hours. I've become so personal about my time. And being a father now has already changed how I use my time. So, you know, it's, it's, for me, it's, it's, it's discipline. Mm. You know, um, you can have so many great ideas. It's discipline, but most of all, it's practice. You've got to keep trying. You've got to keep doing it. Like I always say, practice makes permanent, not perfect. Permanent. The more you do something, surely the better you become at it. So I've started a lot of businesses. Yeah. So I'm becoming better at starting them. I've grown a lot of things. I'm becoming better at growing them. You know, I've, I train a lot, so I've become better. So for me, it's, it's really the consistency and the discipline of applying my time wisely. All I have, right. you know. Sure. Yeah. I know actors like journalists struggle to speak about themselves, so let's speak about the work. Yes, let's go to the work. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it, it's very interesting for me that you, not only in business, you're in winemaking as well. Yes, sir. Um, tell us a bit more about how you got into that. I mean, are you a connoisseur yourself? Um, I've become one. <laughs> I've become a connoisseur. Um, I was a, a very wine-curious person eight, nine years ago. Wasn't that big into wine. But like everything else in life, people build businesses and it's relationships that form the great products that we consume today. And yeah, long story short, I was traveling the winelands. 
Um, and I met an amazing family after meeting a lot of winemaking families, meeting vineyards, looking for f movie and um, TV series locations for my own projects, future projects. I thought, why not travel and see the winelands since I'm creating stories around the winelands. Right. I'm going to meet this amazing family, the Bosman family vineyards. And um, they had this great idea and this grape that they wanted to take to the masses. Um, and they needed something different, something fresh that they've ne they'd never tried before. And we had just met and there was an interest and they presented this grape that they had just licensed from Sicily. Hmm. which grows in a drought, which grows in tough conditions, which grows in extreme heat. It's called the resilient one. It's the Nero grape. Um, Nero meaning black. It's a black grape. And I just love the characteristics of this grape because I felt they spoke to the African people, resilience. This grape is known as the resilient one, the fighter grape. Hmm. And we were going through a drought at the time, so he, had, you know, he was advised by a professor that the smartest wine farmer is the one that's going to travel the world and find a grape that can grow in these conditions. He found one and he had it and he bought 50 cuttings. That's like little stockies you use to plant grapes. And traveling back to SA, 48 of those died. Two survived. Hmm. And those two are the reason today, eight years later, we have a brand that's selling across the world. And, you know, this grape was so special that I thought, I know nothing about wine. I'm not that big into wine. I don't know the wine business. I I'm, I'm grew up on a farm, but I'm not a wine farmer. I'm intimidated, but let me think about it. And after some time, speaking to my wife, she was just like, well, it's business, right? So business is business. It's numbers. It's just a different sector. And you've got the masters who make wine, the Bresman right. family vineyards. And that started. We tested out our relationship for a year. The product was packaged. It was sent out. We, we launched it. And we just fell in love with our working um, type of working um, relationship. And we saw the potential to grow. And now, eight years later... We've grown this grape. We've formed a beautiful partnership um, between Bakwena Brands and the Bosman family vineyards. Now we have a wine-making entity, um, a black-owned farming entity called Bosman Bakwena Brands. Sure. You know, and so much more. I could go on, but it's the beauty of relationships and being able to form things with people, because ultimately people build brands. Absolutely. Yeah. What I also find interesting is that you're a complete novice in the space before what is now reality right world, yeah. and that speaks to i suppose the kind of business acumen that one ought to have the things you rely on when it comes yep. to your intuition yes. i know you say you spoke to your wife and i suppose that's the best advice we can give out a there. smart man does that Consult your wife. <laughs> <laughs> but outside of that yeah. I, I wonder what kind of things you lean on when you need to make important decisions yep. decisions that could potentially cost you money if not your reputation yeah well definitely spirituality mm. top you know at, at first but um, I think my, 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 my format, I've seen how I've done things over the years. My format is this. I don't have to be the best winemaker, but I can collaborate or partner with the best winemakers. Mm. What do I bring to the table? Maybe it's how we send it to the people, how we market it, how we brand it, how we, how we communicate it and make it a thing. So I've partnered with the best winemaking family, the Bosman family vineyards, and we're building something greater than ourselves. The same goes for grooming. I don't have to know how to create a product or make a beard range like I've launched one, but I've partnered with an esthetician who's, who knows about skin, who's a master at what he does. This, and then so it goes. My, my, my venture into restauranting is the same. I don't, I'm not a chef. I don't have to know how to create these recipes, but I can partner with the best at it to create something bigger than myself. So I've learned that I'm not a master at all these things, but I can bring value to these relationships by adding value to these relationships, mm. you know, and that has become my thing. Acting, storytelling, that's my soul. Now, that's what I'm a master at, I would like to believe. But when it comes to ventures and business and collaborations and, 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 and growth and legacy, there's a smarter way to, to still be. Sure. Yeah. Sobering advice. Excuse the pun. Yeah, yeah. 